Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the least touted features of the upcoming Premiere Pro CC 2014, and this is the IBC update that I covered in a lot of detail in the last blog post I had. But in this one, I want to talk about something that while I sort of talked about it in the last video, I didn't really feature it, and I don't feel like Adobe's really featured it either, but I feel like it's a huge feature, at least it is to my workflows. Now, one thing that's always really ticked me off about Premiere was the inability to pass through your sequence settings into your final export. So you'd have to have presets. Let's say you worked in ProRes, you'd have to have one for 25 frames per second, one for 2997, one for 23976. And then on top of that, you'd have to have, say, 1920 by 1080 presets and 720 presets. So it just kind of got out of control. But in this latest update, we're getting the ability to pass through settings to QuickTime files. So we've had that for a while on things like H.264, but not on QuickTimes. And let me show you what I mean. I have this sequence here. If I come down to my sequence and I click on it, you'll see right here, it's 1920 by 1080, 23976. And I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna hit Command M which is the shortcut to export your movie. So if I go to my settings, I had this match sequence settings. And in this case, I had it set to an iframe MPEG preview. So it's gonna do an MPEG export, and that's not what I'm looking to do. I wanna do a ProRes 422 sequence. So if I uncheck that and I come down to QuickTime, you'll see I now have some presets with match source in them. So I have match source, GoPro Cineform. This is one that I made custom for Match Source ProRes 444 with Alpha. But you can also make your own. So I can just come over here and change the codec to ProRes 422. And then I could change these all to Match Source. So I don't need a 1920-1080 preset. I don't need a 23976 preset. I just need the one preset. So once I have this set up, I could come in here, come down to my audio, make sure that's what I'm looking for and it is and then I could of course save my preset so I'm just gonna come over here hit save preset and of course this is no longer match source GoPro Cineform I'm gonna change it to match source Apple ProRes 422 because that is the codec I selected and hit OK. And you'll notice that's my codec. And now whenever I come in here, I'll have a preset for Apple Pro as 422. Now the same could be said of Adobe Media Encoder. And you'll see if I reopen Media Encoder, it's actually inherited the preset that I made in Premiere. So they seem to be sharing presets. Now I could come in, click on this, go to my preset settings, and you'll see I have the same match source options here. And that is helpful for doing things for the new consolidate and transcode, as well as the new render and replace. For those, you need to actually import your presets. So if I come down and I leave this window and I go to render and replace, you'll notice there's a box to import presets and you could select any presets that you've exported out of Adobe Media Encoder. And you do that by coming up to a preset that you've made and you can just right click and hit export presets. Of course, you could do that with multiple presets as well. But this is just a simple tip that will really help you guys work faster. I think it's a great addition that frankly should have been there a long time ago, but I'm really glad to see it's finally made its way into both Premiere and Media Encoder. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC. A ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast to vintage effects to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like time code and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.